Welcome everyone and welcome to you and Facebook and YouTube. I do want to say that right after church, if you're interested in staying, because we will go out through here and into the prayer garden and memorial garden, we will be uh, blessing the plaque that David Blount made for us. And it's a plaque for those who uh, want to uh, place their ashes in the prayer garden, in the memorial garden. And so he has done that for us and we're going to have a blessing for that as, as well as the bench out there that was also given to us. This is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. And once again, we are going to be talking about what Jesus tells us in relation to forgiveness.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Gracious God, we acknowledge that we are sinners, and we confess our sins. Those known to us that burden our hearts, and those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin. Liberate us from the bondage of guilt. Work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the house of David, God raised up a mighty Savior. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, who comes to set us free. Remembering the covenant, God delivered us from our enemies. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, who comes to set us free. Before God, we are holy and righteous, free to worship without fear. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, who comes to set us free. With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and forgives us all our sins. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, guides our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Say it again. Rejoice. Let gentleness be evident for all, for the Lord is near. Let us not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our requests to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Say it again. Rejoice. Let gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading is from the 50th chapter of Genesis. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, and he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 103 responsively. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. So is his mercy great on those who As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As the Father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. The second reading is from the 14th chapter of Romans. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then... Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we, stand, for we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Peter asks about the limits of forgiveness, Jesus responds with a parable that suggests human forgiveness should mirror the unlimited mercy of God. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times but I tell you 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, 
came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then the fellow slave fell, on, fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into the prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Regardless of the admonition of Jesus that we heard today in relation to forgiveness, I know too many people, including myself, and probably you do too, who have, who have never forgiven. I know of people whose spouse was unfaithful and to this day, they have not forgiven. Their hurt is too deep. I know of a man now in his late 70s who lost family members in a car accident over 40 years ago. He has yet to forgive the man driving the other car. All of these people I know attend church regularly, pray regularly, spend time in private devotions. These people have yet to forgive their offenders once, let alone seven times, and especially not 70 times seven. Not only is there a piece of darkness in their heart, but there is a sadness, a longing, a guilt in the heart of those whom they have not forgiven. Once again, Jesus is telling us to go beyond ourselves and live in his spirit. Left to ourselves, in many cases, we are non-forgiving. Forgiveness goes beyond the grain, goes against our impulses. In fact, in many cases, as we know, we would like something untoward to happen to the person or person who needs our forgiveness. Wouldn't it be good if the new spouse was unfaithful to our former spouse, who was unfaithful to us. He or she would get what was deserved. What about the guy who caused the wreck? He should go to jail, jail for sure, even though it was an accident and not a criminal act. Isn't this the way we think? It's been said that some wounds are so deep some debt so large that human forgiveness is next to impossible. These incidences and many more show us rather concretely how different we are than the one who saved us, saved us from ourselves. Forgiveness is hard work and Peter's question recognizes that within God's family we will sin against one another. And the answer from Jesus indicates and recognizes that forgiveness is not from us, but is God's path forward through the Holy Spirit. In ancient times, the number seven, as many of you know, represented fullness and perfection. Peter offers generously, he thought, that we forgive seven times. Jesus responds with boundless, unlimitless mercy. Seventy times, or some translations, is seventy times seven, indicating forgiveness may well be a long and difficult process. Forgiveness through the Holy Spirit takes us from separation from one another to carrying out God's mission of love and mercy together. Isn't it interesting that Peter is the one 
who is asking this question about forgiveness. Because days after this, Peter soon will be in agony, needing Jesus' forgiveness. Because it is within a day or two that Peter denies he knows Jesus, which compounds the agony of Jesus' arrest and torture. Then at the crucifixion of Jesus, Peter, as well as the other apostles, abandoned Jesus. As you remember, only the women and the beloved disciple, who many think was John, were at the cross. I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine what Peter thought, let alone felt, when he began to realize what he had done that night of Jesus' arrest and then his crucifixion. Peter had to have fallen down on his knees in grief. And could there have been any more recognition of forgiveness for Peter, not even having asked for forgiveness, that when after Jesus arose from the dead, the angel at the tomb tells the women to go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus would meet them in Galilee. The significance of Jesus saying we should forgive 70 times takes forgiveness out of the countable category and places it into the realm of the incalculable. Peter knew firsthand how incalculable forgiveness was. The forgiveness to which Jesus points is beyond our capacity to keep tabs on the number of times we forgive and beyond our capacity to offer forgiveness on our own strength or ability. We must always be reminded that it is God's compassion and abundant mercy that makes forgiveness possible, whether transgressions are large or small. From our Old Testament reading this morning, how we long to have the heart of Joseph.
us confess our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Remember in our prayers, of course, we want to remember those in our western states who have been affected by the raging fires, which some have been controlled, but most have not. And also, this week has been a week of tragedy, remembering our 9-11 survivors and those who we lost. I know many of you probably listened and heard um, the same thing we've been hearing for 19 years. but. Uh, it just brings, again, it brings our country together, but it also is such a tra tragedy when we remember that. And Carol Boyle's best friend, her best friend's granddaughter, Haley, uh, has contracted the virus, they think, and uh, she's only one year old, and so we want to remember her in our prayers. And Michelle Henning, who is the daughter-in-law of Terry, is going to Indianapolis this week for a serious medical procedure and uh, we will remember her in our prayers. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools confirmation classes and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Steal our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy and one another and for all of our neighbors. And we also pray especially for those we name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you See that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Wise and gracious God, receive the labor of our hands, these gifts of money, bread, and wine, along with the offering of our lives. Nourish us with the life of your Son, that we might be his body in the world, making known your abundant mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to receive our Redeemer who comes to us in his body and blood. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food, the body and blood of Christ. All who come to you will not hunger. All who believe in you will not thirst. Empowered by this sacrament, send us back into the world to do the work you have given us to do, to share the gospel and be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's several announcements. One is, is Love, Inc. is in need of pillows and blankets. So if you are interested in giving, uh, you can take it to Love, Inc., the pillows and blankets. Um, as I said, the prayer garden, we're going to open this up, and we can just go right out here to the prayer garden, the memorial garden and we will uh, bless the plaque that we have and the bench as well as the memorial garden. We have a congregational meeting tomorrow and we'll be, uh, there's an a agenda. I don't know if we have it out here, but many of you have seen the agenda if you are on email. And so please review that. Um, also, uh, if you've been on um, email, you'll know that we are having a, an election day prayer vigil. We thought that would be appropriate. <laughs> so it's from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and I think she's got 30 minute slots and quite a few have, of you have signed up. You may come to the church. It will be open. Uh, we will be here uh, at some point or another, all, uh, either Loretta and I during that time. Also, there'll be voting here, so the church will be open. Uh, so you, if you would like to come at the church during the time that you're praying, you're praying, you may do that as well. The last thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, my phone died. It really died, like dead, dead. There was nothing. And as you may know, uh, to transfer one phone to another, they don't use the SIM card anymore. They use your face, the face of your uh, phone. Well, my, that face was blank. So I lost everything. So some of you have uh, texted me, Pastor, would you remember someone in prayer? And I've had to say, tell me who you are. So don't be offended if I ask who you are because I don't have you anywhere in my phone because I was not able to transfer anything. And I'm afraid what we have in our directory may not be up to date, especially if you're using a cell phone. So I wanted to, wanted to tell you that. Slowly but surely, uh, it's, it's being, uh, uh oh I have more things on it. <laughs> Plus, it's a new phone, and that in itself is not a good thing. So, there we have it. But at least I didn't have a flip phone. I did, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Please stand. Pastor? Pastor? <laughs> yes? Uh, I'd just like to let everyone know that if they're unable to attend tomorrow's congregational meeting in person, there is a Zoom meeting being set up that they can attend virtually. Thank you. Thank you much, yes. You will be able to have it by, by uh, Zoom? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's for tomorrow's congregational meeting. Okay. Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord.